George Washington was never really into family genealogy. In fact, he said in a letter that it was a subject to which I confess I have paid very little attention. So in this video, we will see how he was related to the British royal family and in turn Queen Elizabeth II. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life, and I also entangle some family trees. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. It's no secret that George's family comes from Britain, and as a result, he is interestingly related to both Charles Dickens and also Kate Middleton. I'll show you. Before we start, I'll tell you what I did in between editing videos for my channel. I remembered one interesting book that I loved as a child, The Hound of the Baskervilles, and lo and behold, I found the opportunity to plunge into this book again all in one game. This is Sherlock from G5, but not everything is so simple. You see, it happens that the plots of the books are changed, and I, along with Sherlock, Watson, and their friends, had to return the real plot of this literary work. And it's not just The Hound of the Baskervilles. There's Alice in Wonderland, Beauty and the Beast, and even Aladdin. Your favorite stories are upside down, and through challenging match three puzzles or hidden object scenes, it's up to you and Sherlock to make it right. There is a little event going on with this game though, and it involves a detective such as yourself. Sherlock needs you to help him find some hidden items for his investigation. In this video, there are four items for you to find. The first category will be crowns, and the other will be boats. Reply to the pinned comment with the exact times the objects appear, and the most attentive people who find all four will be mentioned in my next video. I really like how the game incorporates our childhood stories and characters. It gives us a different twist to the familiar outcomes that we're used to. On top of that, the game has so much detail and it's so colorful. Every round will feel fresh when you find Sherlock's items. But my favorite part is that you can just play it on your browser. Just open it up and go. And the cherry on top, you can get extra bonuses if you use my personal link to download the game on your computer or play from your browser. So new players, grab your extra bonuses from June 15th to July 19th. Don't forget to create a G5 Friends profile to save your progress and get even more useful gifts. And yes, it is free on all platforms including iOS and Android. So use my personal link and let me know in the pinned comments the times the crowns and boats appear in this video. While Sherlock is downloading to our devices, let's go find out more about George. Here's George. He was born in 1732 and he died in 1799. There are many ways that he is claimed to be related to royalty, and what I will show you is just one example. We're going to start off with George's great-great-grandfather, Lawrence Washington, in 1602-1652. Lawrence Washington earned a college education at Oxford into a four-year program from 1619-23. to He completed his Bachelor's of Arts and then went on to get his Master's. He eventually went to serve as a reverend, but when the English Civil War began in 1642, he was fired due to his sympathies with the British Crown, and then died in poverty ten years later when he was 50. Three of his children and a relative emigrated to Virginia following this. We will get to them in a bit. What's interesting that I found out is that Lawrence married Amphilis Twigden and her mother was Anne Dickens. It turns out Anne's brother is William, who is the direct ancestor to Charles Dickens, the writer, in the 1800s. Also, Lawrence's own mother was Margaret Butler, who was part of the powerful Butler family and a direct descendant of James Butler, the third Earl of Ormond, about 200 years ago. You see, the Earl's second son was Richard, who had Edmund, and Edmund had James, Walter, and John. Well, James's kids got the earldom after his uncles from the senior branch died out, and his line goes directly down to Elizabeth Butler and ultimately the Bowes Lion family, which is Queen Elizabeth's mother's line, and I talk more about that in my recreation of her family tree. The second son, Walter, goes directly to Margaret, who was Lawrence's mom. Regarding the paternal line, Lawrence's father descends from Sir William de Hertburn in the Middle Ages. His mother in the 1100s was a Scottish princess and a duchess, the daughter of King Henry of Scotland. One of her younger sons was Sir William. He traded his manor of Hertburn for Wessington, and that name changed to Washington. 
hence his name changed from Sir William de Hertburn to Sir William de Wessington or Washington. So between these hundreds of years from the princess in the 1100s to Lawrence in the 1600s, you can imagine his ancestors hobsnobbing with other nobility and gentry and marrying them. Then the English Civil War happens, the crown collapses for a few years, and Lawrence's kids go to America. Of the three children that went to Virginia in the 1650s, John, the eldest son, is the one that we want. After his father's death, he first assumed his widowed mother's estates. Then he apprenticed with a London merchant, learned colonial trade, invested in a tobacco ship, and then sailed with it to Virginia. During his trip, he met Colonel Nathaniel Pope, a wealthy merchant and planter who had established himself in America, and he stayed with him. At his house, he met his daughter Anne, and they fell in love and got married. Colonel Pope gave his new son-in-law startup capital to become a planter, and thus began the Washington tradition of farming. He was also involved in politics and military, becoming a lieutenant colonel. Anne was her father's heiress, so she died. Then John inherited her wealth. John also married two more times to other wealthy widows, which increased his land holdings substantially. His eldest son, Lawrence, who was George's grandfather, would take over, but he first went to law school back in England and only returned to Virginia to inherit his father's lands. Lawrence Jr. married Mildred Warner, who was George's grandmother, and her mother was Mildred Reed. So it's through Mildred Reed's family that we go back to England and then up to royalty. Mildred's paternal grandmother was Mildred Windbank, whose own paternal grandmother was Anne Tailboys. Anne's mother was Elizabeth Gascoigne, whose parents were William Gascoigne and Margaret Percy. You see, William and Margaret had a whole bunch of children, including Elizabeth and also another daughter, Agnes Gascoigne. And it's through Agnes's line that goes straight down to Kate Middleton's father, and ultimately, Kate. However, if we continue going back up, William and Margaret are fifth cousins, both sharing a great-great-great-great-grandfather who was none other than King Edward III. Edward III is notable because his grandkids would be fighting each other in the War of the Roses for the throne. Edward had five surviving sons. His second son, Lionel of Antwerp, Duke of Clarence, produced Margaret Percy's line. And his third son, who was the famous John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, produced William Gascoigne's line through his daughter, Joan. Joan also had another daughter which would trail down to Elizabeth II's maternal line, but also as seen in my family tree video on Elizabeth II, John of Gaunt's son, so Joan's brother, gave us Elizabeth's paternal line as well. So to sum it all up, John of Gaunt gave us Elizabeth II paternally and maternally, and then John plus Lionel gave us George Washington and Kate Middleton. And that's how George is related to royalty, but how was George born? I'm going to continue George's parents' stories to produce George and how he got his famous Mount Vernon plantation. Back to Mildred Warner and her husband Lawrence Jr. Mildred and Lawrence had Augustine. Augustine had two wives. His first wife with Jane produced four kids, and two of them were the notable Lawrence and Augustine Jr. Then she died, so he remarried to Mary. And they had six kids together, and their eldest was George Washington. Lastly, if you read about Mount Vernon, George Washington's plantation, you'll notice that George and Lawrence are talked about a lot. And how George got possession of the famous house is that their father, Augustine, had lots of land, and it was divided into different sections. Upon his death, Lawrence, the eldest son, got one, which was Mount Vernon, 2,500 acres. Then his younger brother, Augustine Jr., got another parcel. George Washington, their stepbrother, and his brothers each got then a few hundred acres as well. The will, though, stipulated that when Lawrence dies, Augustine Jr. will inherit Lawrence's land, and in doing so, Augustine Jr.'s own land will go to George. Well, Augustine Jr. preferred to keep his own land, so Lawrence's land went to George when he died instead. And that's how George Washington got his famous plantation, Mount Vernon, and also how George is related to English royalty. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more recreations or family trees, then consider subscribing. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions, and I will see you in the next one.